In this video we have disappointments, successes and a lifer trying to complete our 240 bird challenge. This rather important little video starts off with a little drive while the kids are at school up into Lancashire. Hey folks, for once I'm a passenger in a car. <laughs> I'm usually driving. Look who's driving. Hey, got a bounced about a bit there. We are travelling up into Lancashire to hopefully find a Rhinac, which is not only a hopeful new bird for the year, but also a lifer. Stay with us, let's see if we can find it. Over the previous few days, a Rhinac had been showing pretty reliably around the banks of Rishton Reservoir. And as this is a bird that we've gone for a few times and missed, we thought this may be a sure thing. We headed down to the bank where we could see some other birders, and whilst walking down the path, a few other birders spoke to us and said the Rhinac had been showing really well, and quite close. This filled us with optimism as we headed down the bank to where the other people were. When we finally got to them, they told us the bad news. The Rhinac had flown out of sight moments before we'd arrived. This was deeply frustrating, but as we had about an hour and a half before we had to head home for the school run, we thought we'd stick around, hoping the Rhinec could show again. Us and a few other birders stood watching the area the Rhinec was thought to have flown into, and after about an hour of looking out for this very camouflaged bird, nothing. We did see some other birds present here, there were plenty of little egrets and gulls, and a few small waders like Ringed Plover and Dunlin, and as we were about to give up, there was some movement on the stone bank, but not the Rhinec. This was a stoat that was hunting in between all the boulders. Unfortunately now our time was up, we did have to leave. This was pretty disappointing, knowing that if we had arrived 10 or even 5 minutes before we had, we would have seen the Rhinec, adding it to our year list and our life list. Unfortunately though, in birding that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Later on that evening, myself, Kaylee, and Emily headed off in the van southeast towards Lincolnshire. When we arrived, it was late, so we went to sleep. Good morning, folks. We are in Lincolnshire. We're probably about 20 minutes away from where we're going this morning, which is called Donna Nook, and we're looking for a redback trike for our year list. Whilst waiting for the girls to get ready, I had a little look around this car park next to a marsh. There was a few signs of autumn migration, some noisy pink-footed geese flying overhead, and also a couple of wheatier that were jumping around the rocks on the edge of the car park, feeding before their long migration to Africa. As I mentioned earlier, we are looking for a redback shrike today. Um, this bird apparently is a youngster, uh, first winter, and uh, I forgot to mention that Kaylee likes shrikes. It's one of her favourite families of birds, so she's looking forward to this one, hoping we find it. Um, and it will put us very, 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 very close to hitting our target. We took a 20 minute drive not far around the coast to Donna Nook, which is next to a military site, so there's some signs about explosions. Our first task was trying to find out where the red back shrike had actually been seen. This meant looking on our birding app, talking to some other birders, and generally looking around, hoping for the best. Hey folks, we are at Donna Nook. Um, we're where kind of the pin was dropped, there's Emily behind me. Um, just trying to try to see something. What's at the top of that tree over there? That one there. That bird was a collared dove, but soon somebody shouted, I've got it, and everybody scrambled. And literally just about 20 yards down the path, our intended target, the redback shrike, was showing lovely. This species, once a breeder in the UK, has suffered a rapid and severe decline in population here, with some sporadic breeding attempts over the last 10 years, some being successful and some not. Most sightings now being on migration as birds are passing through, and this year most of these being youngsters. This very showy individual is a first winter bird, and apparently we were told this was one of two on site. Regardless, we were super happy to see it and to add it onto our year list. 
Hey folks, uh, we're back at the van. I'd say that was a pretty good... We saw it very well. We saw it very well. It was a, a, a success, I would suggest. Um, someone else found it and shouted, come over here, and there was this big scramble. And then, um, yeah, and then we got it. So there's only now, how many birds there's left? One more to go! One more bird to hit, to hit our target. <laughs> I don't know where that's going to be, and I don't know where we're going next. So stick with us anyway. As there wasn't much nearby to add to our year list, we took a risk and headed up to one of our favourite places, Spurn. Hey folks, so um, we left the wonderful Redback Shrike and came over to Spurn, one of our favourite places. There's nothing been reported here, but it's always lovely to be here. And we're just going to have some picnic before we head out. After a lovely picnic, we headed out to see if we could find our final bird to complete our challenge. After unsuccessfully trying to keep the scope steady in the wind, we decided to take a look on the local paths and fields. A quick walk into Corner Field, which is looked after by friends of Spurn, didn't produce many birds, but it did have plenty of insect life, mostly in the shape of dragonflies, butterflies, bees, wasps and hoverflies. After visiting here, we headed down towards Kilnsea Wetlands, where we started to see really obvious signs of autumn migration, with huge amounts of meadow pipits flying through and landing on the wires. This wetland area is really good for wading birds at high tide, but is also notoriously good for rarities showing up at a moment's notice. And this is what we were hoping for, maybe even a little stint, because we haven't had one of those yet. There were some waders here, like the usual avocets and black-tailed godwit, and a huddled group of red shank that were roosting on a bank. There was also numerous gull species here. Last time I had some really interesting ones. This time, the normal black-headed gulls, herring gulls, and also great blackback gulls. One interesting thing here today, there was a good number of Mediterranean gulls. Somebody even mentioned there may be about a dozen which is excellent to see this far north, their range is clearly spreading. We left the hide and wandered up the path onto a ridge which looks over on one side, Kilnsea Wetlands, and on the other side, a couple of pools called Beacon Ponds. We passed a few reed buntings in the bushes on the way and noticed when we got to Beacon Ponds, there was plenty of wading birds here. We had great views of some species, including ringed plover and dunlin that seemed to be feeding together on the mud, also, I spotted this knot which had gone into its greyish winter plumage and soon joining the knot on the same bank of mud, a snipe arrived, feeding by prodding its large beak into the mud. Although great views of all these waders, unfortunately no rare ones, so we headed back down the path, passing on the way back one of my favourite birds, the tree sparrow. There were a large flock of these around some feeders that had been put up most of them picking up bits off the ground. Our next stop was the Warren to potentially do a bit of sea watching, passing even more meadow pipits en route. We sat with the other birders looking out to sea. There have been a number of birds reported here today flying past, including red-throated divers, black tern and manx shearwater, which would be another bird for our year list. So we sat watching, hoping for our 240th bird. We did see some red-throated divers at a distance, still in the summer plumage, but too far away from my camera. The most abundant birds passing being the terns, some of them quite dramatically diving into the sea from height to catch fish. This was amazing to watch, but still, no new species. So we headed to Canal Scrape. There's a hide here that looks over a small pool surrounded by a reed bed, and again has produced some rarities for us in the past. And as the light was slowly going down, we looked out on the birds in front of us, which mainly consisted of little egret. There was a couple of this species fishing here. Also, there was a few ducks, mainly teal like this individual. After a short while, Kaylee spotted two birds flying in fast. These were snipe. One of them ran into the reed bed, the other one after it. The first one ran deep into the reed bed, the second one only partially, so we could see it. These are super camouflage birds with really intricate plumage. Lucky for us, this bird was super close, giving us amazing views. It did stand still for quite a long time, not moving at all. Eventually, it did start feeding. 
before disappearing out of sight into the reed bed. And as the sun went down further, more little egrets started descending on the pool. Maybe it was one last feed before roost. We counted about eight as we were leaving. Hey folks, it's been a reasonably long day. We've been in Lincolnshire. Oh, there's a kestrel. That's nice. Since then, we've come to Spurn, chancing it really. Um, we know there hasn't been uh, an easterly wind, which is needed generally for more rarities to drop in, but we love the area. So we thought we'd come along. We've seen some wading birds, some cool wading birds, and um, a few other things like some terns, fishing, all sorts of stuff. Um, we're going to put our heads down now and have a little, little try in the morning. Hopefully we might get our last bird for our year list. Stick with us, see you tomorrow. The next morning we only had a short time to have a bit of an explore and hopefully find our last bird to complete our challenge. The first bird was a robin, followed by a magpie. Although very nice birds, not quite what I was looking for. I did have a brief view of a white throat as it flew away and also some nice views of reed bunting in the bushes. Before we left, we had a little look at Canal Scrape again. This time there was a little grebe. Almost every time we come here, there's a little grebe on this pool, so lovely to see. There was also a few warblers in the reed bed, like this sedge warbler that was trying not to be seen, and also a reed warbler that was flitting back and to. Both of these birds will be migrating soon, and may have dropped in on their way south. Just before we left, one of the wardens here that we'd talked to on many occasions pointed out a red start that was showing extremely well in the car park just by the canal scrape pied. This species are often pretty shy, so it was wonderful to see one so confiding, hopping around, not really bothered by people. We watched it feeding on the floor and jumping up to the bushes for quite a while until a bus came and spooked it. But now we had to go, unfortunately not finding our 240th bird. The following Sunday, Emily went to a dad's and Kaylee had a crazy idea. Hey folks, so we're at home, it's a Sunday morning, coming up to about 10 o'clock in the morning. Emily's going to a dad's. The other two girls are coming with us on a crazy little mission to try and find the last bird on our list for our challenge, our 240th bird. Um, we're we're going to do a crazy thing, we're going to drive up well, across to the east coast, which is like three and a half hours or more away, for a couple of hours and then drive back like the nutters we are, because the kids are in school no and idea. we're in work it was tomorrow. Idea it, was. it was your idea. No, it was definitely mine. <laughs> it was yours. Right, join us on this crazy little mission. Let's go. Ah! We started our three and a half hour drive with optimism after a sighting had been posted. Hey folks, so we're on the road, we've been on the road for a little bit. We're heading towards Flamborough Head. Um, this morning there was an olivaceous warbler there, which is a MAGA, an eastern olivaceous warbler. We've just found out we're about more than two hours away, more than two and a half hours away, and it's flown away, which is pretty gutting. So anyway, let's hope somebody refines it. Let's hope either somebody refines it or something else shows up. We're still heading there. There are potentially other birds we could add as our 240th bird. Keep with us, hopefully we'll get something. Disappointed that the olivaceous warbler had gone, we carried on and made it to Flamborough Head. When we arrived, the weather was terrible. Hey folks, we're here at Flamborough Head. You can kind of see the lighthouse a bit behind me. The visibility is terrible. Um, but hopefully we're gonna go and look for some um, new birds. Hopefully our 240th one, so we hit our target. There's yellow browed warble apparently, and there's also maybe a red breasted flycatcher, so stick with us. Almost immediately after paying for the car park, we noticed a few birders in the distance standing by a fence. After walking over, we discovered they were looking for a bird that we needed for not only our year list, but our life list the red breasted flycatcher. And although this bird had been reported as elusive, it came out and sat on a post. This footage isn't the best because it was really foggy. But still, here it is, the red-breasted flycatcher, bird 240. This is a species that breeds in Eastern Europe and winters in Pakistan and India, but do regularly show up on the East Coast during passage. And although the views through the fog weren't the best, we were still super happy to get this amazing bird on our list. Hey folks, so we've got 
we got to the car park and almost immediately someone had spotted a, a red-breasted flycatcher. So we got that and that is a lifer. Woo! Let's see if we can find other things. Another species we were hoping for here was the yellow-browed warbler. This species breeds in Siberia and migrates to East Asia in winter, but do drop into the UK, and sometimes in reasonable numbers. And apparently there are at least half a dozen of these birds in the area. The only problem is, they're small and pretty elusive. We followed some directions from another bird, a downer hedge, where the yellow-browed warbler had been seen earlier that day. We did see some birds, like a stone chat, a white throat and some chiff chaff but it was particularly hard to pick the birds out in the thick vegetation and undergrowth and the weather and poor visibility wasn't helping either hey folks you may not be able to see my eyes through my glasses because the wet soaked through all this uh like hey, misty. misty weather um we went to where yellow browed world women seen earlier um there was plenty of birds in the bushes, but the bushes were really thick, so it was tricky it's to actually to pick birds out. Um, definitely got chiff chaff, um, maybe a gold crest. I know, a stone chap, yeah, it was it was a bit rough. So we're heading back to a little place with some willows uh, that they've been seen this morning, the yellow browed warblers. Mm. The only problem is we haven't got too long left because we've actually got to get home again. We spent a short while by some willows and did see a yellow-browed warbler, but it was too quick for me to get footage. By now, unfortunately, we did have to go home. Hey folks, so we got our 240th bird, which was the red-breasted flycatcher, which was a lifer as well, which is amazing. So, we've now completed our challenge. So that's a wrap. No, 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 no. At least do 10 more. 10 more? 10 more. 250? Please. What do you think, guys? 250? Let's do it. Let's do it. Please like. Please subscribe. And hit that notification bell. Bye, See you. <laughs> Yay. See you next time. <laughs>